Despite the recent test failure, SpaceX is moving ahead with bold resolve. Momentum is building, and all signs now point toward a steady march to Flight 10, possibly even faster than most expected. The mission ahead is more than just another test. It carries the weight of renewed confidence and the promise of progress, aiming to become a defining moment in the Starship program. So, how are preparations unfolding, and what hopes ride on this next flight? Let's find out right now on today's episode of Great SpaceX. For those who are passionate about large-scale developments like rocket testing and launches, Starbase might seem a little quiet at the moment. However, behind the scenes, preparations for the next major milestone, Flight 10, are moving ahead with strong momentum. What makes this period especially exciting is the unexpected change in SpaceX's testing system. This shift has significantly raised hopes for an earlier launch than many had anticipated, especially when considering the timeline followed following the Ship 36 incident. If all goes smoothly, Flight 10 could very well lift off this month. Signs of preparation are already evident. Sea level and vacuum engines were recently spotted being moved into Mega Bay 2, clearly intended for Ship 37. These engines are expected to be installed within days, setting the stage for upcoming tests. Meanwhile, the static fire stand has become one of the most active zones at Starbase. After being transported into position, the platform recently had its support legs installed. This change indicates that it will now have a semi-fixed connection to the orbital launch mount rather than being permanently welded. This semi-fixed design allows it to be detached and moved after testing, offering greater operational flexibility. In the days following this upgrade, new components were welded onto the static fire ring. Some observers believe these are mounts designed to support the ship's Raptor vacuum engines, which are different from sea level engines in both size and thrust. This suggests that the ring is being carefully optimized to handle a wide range of ship specific tests, not just for the upcoming flight, but for future missions as well. It could even support operations on other pads or assist with ship transportation procedures in the long run. With these upgrades nearly complete, the ring appears to be close to fully ready for testing. It is expected to be moved into position on the OLM within the next week. Once in place, a series of smaller shakedown tests will likely be conducted to validate its reliability. These tests should only require a day or two. After that, Ship 37 will be brought in for static fire testing. While this will be the first time a ship is tested individually on this particular stand, there is reason to be confident. This platform has already supported many Super Heavy tests, and Super Heavy generates far greater thrust than the ship stage. All indicators suggest that Ship 37 is on track to fly within July. Following the Ship 36 incident, many people doubted whether such a rapid return to flight was even possible. But thanks to a strategic and innovative update to the testing infrastructure, SpaceX has once again proven its ability to move fast and adapt. Meanwhile, Super Heavy also appears to be largely ready for flight. The only remaining issue is the recent removal of the hot staging ring, which was unexpectedly returned to Star Factory. However, reinstalling the ring onto the booster should not take long. All of this is setting the stage for Flight 10, which is widely regarded as a critical turning point in the Starship program. The transition to Starship V2 has brought both excitement and setbacks. After three V2 flights this year, progress appears to have slowed due to persistent problems. Flight 7 and Flight 8 ended in explosions during ascent. Flight 9 reached higher performance, but was ultimately brought down by failures in the payload door system and a subsequent loss of control. Ship-related leaks are still believed to be the root cause of many of these issues. Even Super Heavy, which had successfully landed twice, encountered new challenges during Flight 9 as the mission complexity increased. Therefore, Flight 10 carries the heavy responsibility of resolving multiple outstanding issues. The goal is to complete a full flight profile with both stages functioning properly, and to meet all flight objectives. For Super Heavy, this means performing well after stage separation. The engines must operate flawlessly during both the boost back and landing burns. Additional upgrades may also be necessary to support a safe return following increasingly demanding mission profiles. For the ship stage, the first hurdle is surviving the ascent phase. Harmonic vibration responses and hardware reliability must be improved. After that, the payload deployment system must function correctly. This requires a refined and reliable payload door mechanism. During re-entry, the vehicle will face extreme conditions. Stability must be maintained, leaks prevented, and the flap control systems and heat shield components must be durable and precise. 
Another critical system to monitor is the COPV, which caused the failure of Ship 36. SpaceX recently performed a test that may have simulated the failure conditions of the COPV. With that data in hand, SpaceX is likely implementing upgrades to improve its reliability. All of these elements are essential to achieving a successful Flight 10. We may see results within just a few weeks. Are you ready for Flight 10? Type the number 10 in the comments to show your excitement. You can also try to guess the date of the launch. My prediction is July 28th. And as always, like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest on SpaceX's development journey. Not only are preparations for Flight 10 progressing steadily, but SpaceX is also making impressive strides toward long-term development at Starbase. One of the most noteworthy recent developments involves the movement of Booster 18's fuel tank, which is believed to be the first major component of the V3 booster. This specific tank is said to be a landing tank, which suggests that it is separate from the primary fuel tanks. Its purpose would be to store fuel solely for the booster's landing process. This is a critical advancement and marks a significant design change from previous booster versions. It's not yet clear how this landing tank will be arranged within the structure of the V3 booster. However, we may soon find out as Booster 18's assembly progresses. The implementation of a dedicated landing tank shows that SpaceX is prioritizing reusability and precision landing in this new generation of super heavy boosters. This focus makes a great deal of sense. The V3 booster will be much larger than its predecessors and is expected to travel farther and carry heavier payloads. With these demands, controlling fuel use becomes much more complex. Attempting to handle both ascent and landing on a shared fuel system could create limitations. By separating the landing fuel supply, SpaceX can better ensure consistent and safe landings, especially when returning directly to the launch site. As of now, the landing tank has been delivered to the megabay and placed in an upright position, likely in preparation for integration into the Booster 18 prototype. The current state of con construction suggests that some key segments, such as the aft section and the forward extension, have not yet been stacked. Once the landing tank is installed, final stacking and integration steps will likely follow soon after. But this is only the beginning. There are several other upcoming features expected to distinguish the V3 booster. The most anticipated is the redesigned booster top, which will include a new hot staging setup and potentially a revised configuration for the grid fins. Additionally, the aft section will house an upgraded engine system. Unlike earlier designs, this version is expected to feature an open structure without the full outer covering. This will make the engines more visible and may assist with heat management and maintenance access. The V3 upgrade is not limited to the booster. Significant changes are also being made to the ship. Six V3 nose cones have already been spotted inside the Star Factory, a clear sign that full-scale production is accelerating following the Ship 36 explosion. There is now ample space inside Megabay 2 for stacking new hardware, provided that SpaceX continues to deliver the necessary components. In fact, a new work stand was recently seen arriving at the site, possibly to support this next phase of production. Given the pace of progress, it is reasonable to expect a fully assembled V3 prototype within the next month or two. Testing would likely follow shortly after, keeping the timeline on track for a V3 flight before the end of this year. This upcoming launch will be significant. It'll mark the official end of the V2 phase, which has faced its share of difficulties, and will usher in a more advanced and refined era. V3 will serve as the baseline design for the future refilling missions and the human landing system variant that NASA will rely on for the Artemis program. These developments are being mirrored by equally ambitious upgrades to ground infrastructure. At the production site, Foundation Pilot Driving is ongoing in the Gigabay area. This signals the completion of site cleanup and the beginning of serious construction. If foundation work wraps up within the month as expected, steel framework assembly will likely begin soon. Once operational, Gigabay will work in tandem with Star Factory to rapidly scale Starship production to meet future mission demand. Over at the launch site, Pad B is nearing completion. All 20 clamp arms have now been installed on its orbital launch mount. Final installation of protective hardware is underway, including the Booster Liquid Oxygen Quick Disconnect backplate. The chopsticks system has been lowered for additional work, such as cladding installation, signaling that the launch pad is almost ready for its initial round of tests. In the surrounding area, the tank farm continues to be expanded with new pumps to increase fuel delivery rates. And in line with SpaceX's long-term vision, a proposal has been submitted to construct a fuel production facility adjacent to the launch area. This plant would enable on-site manufacturing of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, 
which would further streamline operations and reduce reliance on off-site deliveries. With vehicle upgrades, infrastructure improvements, and bold new manufacturing capabilities all accelerating in parallel, SpaceX is building not just for the next flight, but for the future of interplanetary spaceflight. So how exactly does SpaceX need to prepare to enter the next chapter of the Starship program? The answer lies in the roles of the remaining two V2 pairs, now positioned as the final stepping stone before the arrival of V3. Flight 10 has a clear objective, which is to resolve key technical challenges observed in earlier flights. These include engine reliability, payload deployment, re-entry stability, and COPV performance. However, it'll not include a catch attempt. Instead, the focus is on executing a complete and stable two-stage mission to demonstrate overall system maturity. Flight 11, by contrast, holds more unknowns and more potential. If Flight 10 succeeds, then 11 may attempt the first full-stage catch using the Mechazilla arms. This would be a major step forward and a fitting finale for the transitional V2 generation. Success here would validate key recovery hardware and give SpaceX the confidence needed for the operational shift to V3. And if it fails, the insights gained will directly inform design updates for the next iteration. To enable these missions, SpaceX is moving fast. B-17 has completed cryogenic proof testing, and S-38 is believed to be fully stacked in Mega Bay 2. While COPV issues at Massey may delay cryogenic testing for S-38, this pause offers more time for system checks and refinements. Together, these final V-2 flights represent a decisive moment. Flight 10 is about proving readiness. Flight 11 is about pushing boundaries. Both are setting the stage for what comes next. Preparations are underway, and while things may seem calm now, Starbase could shift into high gear at any moment. The countdown to V3 is accelerating, and it all begins with the calm before the storm. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.